on the move this week, hot footing it across Europe, partly by design, partly because of a heart to heart which resulted in a change of plans and partly because of a miscalculation on my part. Hello my love, welcome back. We are in Albania at the moment. If you're new around here, I'm Corey, wife, mother, business owner, dream life liver, and lately that dream life has looked like us traveling around Europe full time as a family, but that is changing and we're gonna be talking about why in today's video. So join us as we make tracks and let me update you on the reality behind living this particular dream and whether this is the end of the road of travel for us. Oh, it's chilly out here. So I'm gonna update you on how our plans have changed and why. But first, a little bit of an update on our travels so far because it feeds into why we're making these changes. So I haven't been making videos on everywhere we've been because frankly, <laughs> it was getting a little bit overwhelming keeping up to date with that. And also because my intention hasn't actually ever been for this to be a travel channel. It's about the realities behind going after pursuing and then living your dream life. So we've done a lot, like a huge amount. And what you might have seen if you've been following this channel for any length of time and you watched some of those travel videos is just a fraction of what we've actually done. And if you have been following along for a while, you might be like, wait, why are you back in Albania? <laughs> or where have you been? You seem to have been jumping around a lot. So don't worry, we're gonna catch you up. And if you're new around here and you don't know where the heck we started or how this all came about, then I'll get you up to speed super quick. Behind me here, you can see underneath these polytunnels, the owner of this farm was telling us they have some special grape varieties. We've asked them if we can buy some wine. They said they might bring some by later today, so fingers crossed. That's better. We have a chair now. I have tea, and those of you who have been following for a while, you'll notice that I have a handmade pottery mug again. Yay! Having broken two of ours. My mum visited us for Christmas. She makes these by hand and brought us two mugs. Love it. So we have been traveling full time, living in this van around Europe as a family of three. We started in France, headed into Switzerland, then headed back into France in an attempt to chase the sun, which was mm, semi-successful. Then made it to Northern Italy where we met my parents in the Auster Valley for a week which was delightful but we were staying in an Airbnb which although was a really excellent one because we hadn't been in the van for very long we were kind of craving getting back to the van and actually really enjoyed settling back in and then eventually finding our rhythm with van life but no sooner had we done that in the Italian lakes than we ditched the van again for a second time got on a plane flew to Ireland to shop for a farm because hello we are also want to be homesteaders <laughs> flew back, picked the van back up, enjoyed a little bit longer in the Italian lakes, and then started basically zigzagging our way down the good old boot of Italy. From there, we took a ferry across to Albania, incidentally, which is where we are right now, but this was earlier. <laughs> and that's when my ability to pump out videos using our travel content, the footage that I'd been filming, started to flounder a little bit. And so I actually missed out sharing some really really great places like Gyrocaster which we loved so much that we made sure to stop specifically because that is the place where I had the best pistachio donut of my entire life. <laughs> We absolutely loved Albania, however, we couldn't stay there forever, of course. We wanted to keep going, keep exploring, so we headed next to North Macedonia, spent a week in an Airbnb, just chilling because the pace had been getting a little bit too speedy for us, uh, by Lake Ohrid, which for me is every bit as beautiful as the more famous Italian lakes. Definitely check it out if you're in that region. We also visited Skopje, the capital, 
very unusual place. <laughs> And then we had a rather disastrous start to our time in Bulgaria. And this is where I didn't pick up my camera and even film it because we were in the sort of moment of it and dealing with it. And I didn't want to add extra pressure to the situation, but I think it would have been funny to watch back. So we were in the queue for the passport control booth at the North Macedonia to Bulgaria border. And we heard this really loud noise and we were like, what the heck was that? And we thought, well, there's a building site over there. Maybe they're using some sort of compressor we went to move forward and it turned out that noise had been our tire on this beast of a van <laughs> this weighs several tons and so Kayvan, bless his soul had to change the tire whilst creating a very significant obstruction to the border crossing queue <laughs> It's just made it a little bit more stressful, but he made it happen. The jack for the van didn't break, which we were worried about. And we got to our first park up, which was a beautiful place out in the countryside. An English couple have owned some land over there for years and years, and they welcome a couple of campers, and they also have an Airbnb. We thought, brilliant, we can turn up, relax. Within five minutes of arriving, our van, our heavy van, sunk into their mud and would not get itself out. The wheels were spinning and every time we tried to move it, it was sinking deeper and deeper into the mud. Long story short, <laughs> the hosts became both our hosts, saviors, and then bartenders <laughs> in that order and now firm friends. And after a number of increasingly beefy vehicles failed to save us and rescue us out of this hole that we'd sunk into, I think I do have a photo, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, the mud was literally halfway up the tires we were properly bedded in it was getting dark we were starting to get really concerned that we just live here now in bulgaria uh, and fortunately james knew somebody with a very large tractor which also struggled i've never seen a tractor's wheel spin before but that happened and fortunately we made it out so <laughs> that was a bit dramatic but we loved our time in bulgaria and also a special shout out to james and trina for rescuing us and also just making us feel all kinds of welcome but we loved bulgaria and ended up spending a lot longer there than originally planned partly because we loved it so much and partly because we got ill and it was while we were recovering from that illness that things really changed but we'll have to save that next piece of the story for just a second because we need to pack up this van and start making tracks because we have a ferry to catch we are heading now towards Duras in Albania to get our ferry to Italy the truth and the reality of living the dream life and that's something that I'm really keen to portray and share all of on this channel is that the reality doesn't always exactly match up and line up with our expectations right of course because life is life things change we change and that's okay. So we were parked up in this cozy little park and I say cozy because it, we were surrounded by trees and it just felt really familiar and safe and we enjoyed tucking into this place in Plovdiv. Uh, and Kayvan and I went and took our mugs of tea out to this bench out in the park because that's as much as we get in terms of a day night situation. And we had a bit of a heart to heart about how we were feeling about traveling and we were feeling a little bit burnt out by the travel. We weren't properly loving this full-time travel gig anymore. And there were things that we had acclimated to and things that we hadn't. And for me, living the dream life isn't about the travel. It's not about tiring caveman. It's not about starting a homestead. It's not those circumstantial things. It's more about having the sense of agency and possibility to have a dream and pursue it and go after it. And that also includes sometimes changing your mind a little bit as well. So for us, the reality of this particular dream, traveling at full time, is that it's very dualistic. It is incredible and exhausting. It is exhilarating and challenging, all of it all at once. And there are lots of things that are probably quite obviously great about traveling full time, extra time together, exploring new places, immersing yourself in a new culture, trying lots of different foods, that's big, <laughs> that's high on my list. And there are things that are difficult. So there are certain aspects of van life that are a 
a challenge logistically and that's you know something that we've largely got used to but there are things that we haven't been able to nail that then have started to contribute to this feeling of travel burnout and I think a lot of it for me anyway is that one of the great things about traveling is the newness and that is also something that becomes really overstimulating after a while I'm really craving <laughs> some familiarity uh, another thing is the continuous decision making is exhausting decision fatigue is a real thing and I hadn't been prepared for that at all as, tra as an aspect of travel I didn't know that I would get tired of the constant newness I thought it would just be continuously fun and exciting and I didn't know how many tiny decisions were required every single day and as a parent we have to make lots of decisions anyway don't we and as a business owner I need to have my good decision brain on and so when you add in travel where are we parking where are we going next what are we seeing where are we eating all of this it just started to take the shine off the adventure and I think something we have all struggled with is how seemingly impossible it is to have a proper structure I think we're all really craving a bit of rhythm and routine we have some semblance of that that fits around my work but not enough I think for any of us and because of all of the unknowns and because of the continuous change of environment it's not really possible to just say well on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. we absolutely do this or we always do this at this time and that at that time and I personally have struggled without that lack of structure. So we had a very uneventful crossing in the best possible way from Albania to Italy and we are heading past Bologna towards Turin. We're going to try and make it to Lyon tonight. Like I said, hot footing it across Europe. Okay, where were we? Oh yes, we were talking about how this changed our plans. But in a second, I'll tell you about the mistake that I made, which has resulted in us hightailing it across Europe. So originally back in 2020, when we decided this wasn't just a dream anymore, it was now something we were going to actually do. We thought we would go traveling for a full year, but we had been planning to then just go back to our normal lives. If you can hear background noise, it's because we're getting... <laughs> it's because we're getting petrol. <laughs> that was the petrol attendant. Side note, the only Italian phrase and I know is tutta di pompa sono in uso which means all of the pumps are in use don't ask me how you know that so yes we decided to do for a year when our plans started emerging and evolving and we decided we actually wanted to move to Ireland after our gap year then we thought actually we'll travel for around nine months finish up in Ireland in around April so that we have plenty of time to settle in start getting to know what's what in our vicinity start getting to know people before the young one settles into school in September and uh, alongside that our route plan had been to spend the winter in Turkey so about three months in Turkey because we have to be out of the Schengen region so for the uninitiated amongst you who don't know about the Schengen shuffle because of Brexit cheers Brexit we can only spend 90 days in every 180 days inside the Schengen region which is most of but not all mainland Europe so Turkey of course not included in that so we were gonna spend three months there so when we were having this heart to heart conversation in that park in Plovdiv we made the decision to cut out that Turkish leg of our journey which was difficult because we were really looking forward to exploring Turkey but well, we've just pulled over so we can make a cup of tea so hang tight just over halfway not too shabby considering it's half past four in the afternoon Near 350 kilometres to go. Not today. Today? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the border crossing. Okay, I'm back. So it's actually much later now. We are just looking behind the screen. I'll see if I can get some footage and pop it on here. It'll be through our dirty windscreen. <laughs> we are looking at the Alps. So we, like I said, we are hoofing it. <laughs> there we were on that park bench in Plovdiv and we decided to cut our travels short. 
we decided to cut out the whole leg that we'd been, the whole turkey leg, the whole, whole leg of our journey, three months in Turkey, or tunnel, and actually start returning rather than hang out for the winter and wait for more Schengen time to accrue outside of the Schengen zone. Partly just because we were worried that we were going to end up feeling overly fatigued by the travel and end on a kind of low note rather than end on a high. Uh, partly because Ireland, she's just a call in us <laughs> and we're keen to get there. And partly because it just, we felt like we'd gone east enough and to go into Turkey and to explore all of Turkey and her beauty and wonder, we'd be heading further and further and further from our eventual home and that pull was just too much. So we made the decision then to cut our journey short. And actually, I think since having that conversation, since making some of these changes, the thing that's been really cool is it's helped us to make some other minor changes and really embrace this last stint, maybe not this last couple of days and we'll get into why it's such a mad dash in a minute, but it's made us really embrace the, the last several weeks um, that we've been in Europe and really yeah, make the most of it in a renewed way. So I feel like we're going to finish up this period of full-time travel on a high and feeling satiated and that kind of like really good sweet spot of like we've done and seen plenty there's other places we'll, we're still excited to explore in the future but we haven't got to that place of feeling completely over it so that feels like a really good move bonjour we're in france now yes i know i said we're hoofing it keep up here are the things, two things that went wrong. Amidst all of the changes of routes, that was the big change that we made, taking out the whole three month stint in Turkey. We've actually changed our route across Europe several times. Um, and somewhere in the midst of that, even though I have an app to help me calculate the number of Schengen days that we have left, I misremembered how many days we had left. So we were meeting my parents in Greece for Christmas. And when we did that, I then realized that we didn't have as much time remaining as we'd anticipated and so we started looking to book our ferries to return. We were going to take a little bit of time heading through France, spend our anniversary in France, which is today as I'm recording, super romantic <laughs> French anniversary, uh, largely at motorway services. And so that, are you kidding me? <laughs> just blowing his nose while I'm trying to film. Dude! <laughs> so that was mistake number one. But mistake number two was we had lightly researched the ferry options back to Ireland, but not fully scrutinized times and sailings. And when we went to book, we found out first, the first ferry that we wanted to get didn't go daily. Now we'd gone from Italy to Albania and we were going from Albania to Italy, but to a different part of Italy to try and cut out some of the driving time. We thought they went every day, like the previous ferry, they did not. So that built in an extra day to our travel plans, which impacted the rest of the timeline. And the point in France, lower down in France, that we wanted to go directly to nearer where we're aiming at in Ireland, we found out <laughs> that they don't sail at all in January on that route. And we couldn't physically get there because we were in uh, Athens until the 27th with my parents. We couldn't physically get there any sooner to get the last sailing in December. So we then had to change the ferry route from Cherbourg then over to Ireland. And again, they don't go every day. So these two mistakes combined meant that we had to get from Athens on the 27th, which you've seen us doing. So we've been driving through Greece, through Albania, ferry across to Italy, across the top of Italy. We're in France. We're heading to Cherbourg in the hope that we make our ferry tomorrow because if we don't, the next ferry that leaves that can take us safely to Ireland and back out of the Schengen region is after our Schengen days expire. Oops, the young one in the back just piped up and said, will we make it? <laughs> 
we hope so <laughs> you'll have to tune in to find out um so we yeah we're heading to ireland we're going to be traveling around ireland a little bit and then also getting ourselves settled in so we are very excited despite the slightly stressful jaunt across the continent of europe but until next time be living your dream life bye for now